Well, all right, top of the morning, everybody. Uh, I've been up for a bit now. I've got my jumbo super cool ass iced coffee that I created for myself. And I had to go through my phone and uh, I learned how to actually delete things. What? <laughs> yeah, my phone's like four years old. Again, I'm, I'm one of those guys. Upgrade, man. Yo, I know. And I am. Hey, money. I'm not gonna lie. Money's a situation, but it won't be for very long. I know that, and I'm stating it, and I promise it for you, me, and everybody. Floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee, baby. Woo! But I, I learned a new thing today about freeing up storage all throughout my phone. Um, <clears throat> and I can record as long as I want now, forever. <laughs> Whatever, I'll do what I want. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about my dream last night, y'all. Again, my dreams are messages for me and for you, for all of us. <clears throat> And if you heard the one about my friends from high school that was in my dream, I I don't think it's the the whole uh, message, but also I was on I got back on Facebook. Which why do I do that, guys? I don't like being on Facebook. I try to get my message out, but uh, I don't know. It just seems fake to me. Like it's not real. I love Mark Zuckerberg. I met him as my voice cracks, and uh, and his friends and everybody, and they're cool cats, man. They're super cool. Some of those nicest people I ever worked for as a bartender. Um, I don't know. It's just not my thing, man. That social media. This is more my thing right here. Making videos, put on YouTube. I guess I can look at that the same way, but, uh, I don't know. We'll, you know, we'll figure that out. But my dream, uh, oh, well, the, I see that a bunch of them got together, the women, and it was only the women in the dream it was only the women, right? And it was the same women I saw, uh, uh, and they're cool cats, man. Uh, they're all swingers, by the way, um, or polyamorous or lesbians, which is great. And if you ask a swinger, if you're a swinger, they're like, no, 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 I'm not. But a lot of my friends are. That means they're swingers. Um, but there's something when I saw that picture and they're all wearing um, the high school shirts. I got this insecurity or rage or anger. And I don't know if it's mine or all of theirs. And I don't know if it's toward me or me to it's psychic abilities, two, two, two on the clock, man. It um they get interesting. It might be the whole moon thing going on now, or it, it's really interesting. It really whew, man, I went to sleep at like 5 p.m. yesterday and woke up at 3 a.m. like normal. <clears throat> and then forced myself to stay in bed and was like, fuck, I'm not getting up today. Whatever. <laughs> but eventually I got up. But my dreams last night were awesome. Maybe some of y'all are having those feelings toward uh, toward your friends, and uh, it's all good, man. Like everyone's got their own spirit guides. Like I have anger, and I know things about people psychically, and and I think to myself, what the fuck? Why are they getting this stuff, and and I'm getting it? It's not like, yeah, it's not a competition, and they have their own guides and things too. And think about it, I can see things they don't see, all the little sparkles around me, and and all that. And I've talked about it before, and I'll talk about it again, and. You know, the beings that walk around me that it looks like, uh, I'll say like the predator, but it's not, yes, kind of like the predator because it is a uh, 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 interdimensional space being, but uh, it, it's more the the shimmer. It's like the shimmering invisible suit, but with sparkles all around it. Uh, I've seen it in dark <clears throat> as well. And uh, they're beautiful. It's amazing. It's so much fun. So much fun. I love seeing them. Like right now, I just saw a big spark of light. Not, not a spark like I normally see, but a big kind of a, a ball of light go through, which I wouldn't give that up to for anything. Uh, I've had to, I, I guess I didn't sacrifice this stuff, right? Like my workouts, my body, things like that. I just had a whole new energy shift to go through that I didn't know about. I was not aware of these things beforehand. Um, but my dream last night, I was with a, I was with a bunch of, again, it looked like friends, maybe from high school or college. And, and I was, I, I was, I was going to go see someone I'm dating and I couldn't decide in the dream whether I was going to drive up there in my Jeep, my old school Jeep I used to own. And, uh, and that's a whole thing. We'll talk about that. And or fly, so I decided to drive, which is always I always love that in dreams when I drive the vehicle because it means like I'm taking charge in a way, but also not, but trusting it, and it means a lot of different things. <clears throat> but when I got there, 
Who was I dating? It was Jen Ortega. Yeah, who wouldn't love that? She's a wonderful, wonderful performer. And a beautiful woman, beautiful, beautiful young woman. And I, I used to know a girl in college who looked just like her. Like, that, I'm always saying, like, she's got to be your mom. I don't know if she's from uh, Manhattan or what, but I remember this young lady, too, who looked, who, I mean, they're identical, the two of them, uh, Jen Ortega and this girl I knew in college. She was pregnant last time I saw her at, like, 22 or something like that, or maybe she was, like, 19 and I was a little older, but it wasn't my baby. Man, I I wish, um, because she was gorgeous, but he was she would have eaten me alive. All, all women, you know, they, they all ate me alive because I'm so nice and so, like, understanding and giving and didn't have boundaries. Didn't know what it was. I just thought everybody would be cool, you know, until I got to a point. I always had one boundary I didn't know of. If you talk about my dreams or if you shit on my dream as an actor or you uh, shit on my working out in some way, shape, or form, no matter how great shape I am, you got cut off immediately. Everything else I was pretty cool about. Like, you could yell, you could be a bitch, you could be everything. I'm like, okay. Didn't bother me because, you know, I was a happy-go-lucky dude all the time. I guess over time it all, you know, added up. But uh, once once someone stepped on those two things, um, boom, I cut you off immediately. So I guess that was my boundary. Now I have uh, – and it's good to have them. I, I think know thyself, you know. Jesus didn't go hang out with everybody. You know, not that he wouldn't, but he was guided to who, where, when, why – just like when Thomas asked, "Why are you sitting with them? They're the they're the prostitutes and the and the tax the 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 mobsters or you know," and Jesus said, uh, "That's where I need to be right now." He never said they needed my help. Jesus didn't talk that way. He just said, "That's where I need to be right now," and uh, that I understand. So when I got to New York, it was her, and we were in a store. And there was a store clerk trying to help us. And it didn't seem like a big fancy store. It was like a Walmart or something, but 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 better. And not that Walmart's bad, but that's what it seemed like. And we made out and and did have sexy time a little bit. But it was just funny. It was but you know what was really great about we had this understanding, like she had this job to do. And I get it. I'm an actor. Like, I don't get jealous whatsoever. Hey, caring is sharing. I will say that. Uh, I'm not a swinger. I'm not. It's a whole different energy than what what they're doing. And it, we're all the same, but it's a very different energy. It's really about love. Um, and it was she had the, the same camaraderie and um, respect for me as I had for her. And that... That was really, really amazing, really wonderful that she had to go do this thing. And I was cool with it. And I stayed in the store and looked around and, you know, uh, it was like me again, but way better. And I'm always in the in the shape I want to be in in my dream, which is always great because that's happening. That's coming back. And again, when you guys see me, you're going to be like, you're in great shape, dude. Thank you. I do appreciate that. I know me. It's like, uh, I can't compare to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger is the god of bodybuilding. Um so even at 70, he's like, what do you mean? I, I, I'm the greatest bodybuilder ever lived. What have, I've proven it. What else am I going to do with that? I just like being in the shape I like being in, you know? Uh, I just like working out and, and getting back into it, doing these new things I'm doing. And I'll get back into the, the gym itself, um, financial reason. But also, uh, I had a person stalk me. I had a bunch of people stalking me, going to the different gyms I was working out at, like making videos. And I was like, what the f so, and, and many of you, why didn't you go to the police? Why didn't you, what evidence did I have? You know, like I can, I can make a report, but also I wasn't wrong, but it, it, they could, I just didn't have like concrete evidence besides my psychic abilities and seeing them and knowing who they were and who they were associated with. Like, I guess, you know, through that connecting the dots, but then I would have to really do the investigative work or get a private investigator to do it. But I decided, you know what? I have a great weight set at home. Um, I'm, I'm a professional trainer, uh, fitness expert, you know, in my own way. Uh, again, I would say a master and expert is someone who's more of a, a, a student than a teacher because we're always open to learn new things. So I was like, I just work out at the house. And, uh, and yeah, but that's why doing these new things and doing it a little differently. Think about it. I'm going to show these, what, eight to 10 to 15 minute workouts and I'm going to do them 
five days a week, right? And then I'll eventually add some kind of cardio to it. But the, even the way I do it is a very cardio from when you guys watch it. Oh, I got the hiccups because I'm drinking the coffee. It was 10, 10. 10, 10 is my number. And when I say these numbers, guys, Google them. Look them up. Angel numbers. You're going to love it. Or not, but maybe I think you will. Yeah. Um, if I'm looking at my supernatural right here, join the hunt. Ooh. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it with you, Dean and Jared Padalecki. Uh, it would be Dean and Sam, but uh, Jensen and Jared. And then the other dream, like I, because I woke up around three and I was like, I should just make the video now or this. And I was like, no, go back to sleep. Get some sleep, man. And, uh, ooh, can I remember the other dream? This is the interesting part now. Oh, wow. It's not coming to me. The other dream I had. See if we can meditate on that a little bit. I remember it now. Again, with girls, they're always women, not men, in my dreams uh, from high school and a little bit from college. But we were in New York City where I used to live in Queens. And in my old apartments, I lived in a, a building where I lived in the top floor at one point in time. Then I lived at the bottom floor. It was only three floors. Um, but I drove my Jeep. And then I met up with, and there was, what happened? I got, so I don't know it's funny. No, I get it. Because in the dream, it was like I had too much to drink or something. And I don't remember or I was roofied or maybe hopefully that's not the case. But uh, I, I don't, I didn't, I don't remember what happened. But I had a great time, and I, you know, I was doing my thing, and I ended up, I think, hooking up with a bunch of them, or at least one. Uh, so much so that the next day, this one <laughs> particular girl from high school, and and now, and it was the same group, not the exact same, but the, but but that group, um, and they called me Lusty Pat, and I was like, really? What? what thank you. And the lights just dimmed. I was like, what did I, what did I do that night? And like, I remember we were on the subway train. And we went to like different really cool rooftop bars. Uh, we were having fun, but it was also work for me, kind of like the three of uh, uh, cups, you know, which which to me is a, is kind of a work fun. And when when I have that card, it's that one woman on the computer typing away, like Carrie Bradshaw, <laughs> and the other three girls. Yeah, we have our cups, and but we were having fun, and I was like, you know, they loved me, loved me being there. You know, I slept over at that that place, which was my part, but my old apartment, but with their apartment. And I ever went to the basement, I don't think, but I did go to the basement apartment as well and kind of hang out for a bit. Um, it which could mean highs and lows or going up, going down. But then I woke up the next day in the dream, and I couldn't remember, and I, and I wasn't really hungover. I just couldn't remember. And, be, and I would go, I went out into, which I always think is Queens, which by the way, it isn't Queens, wherever I'm astral projecting to at night. Um, it was a great spot. I went to a mall. <laughs> That's right. I went to a mall and Jen Ortega was not in this one, but then I ran into like these guys that were like, Hey man, you got wild. Last night I was like, who the are you? And I was sitting at like this bar by myself, but not by myself. Cause I'm talking with like the bartender and like this other, uh, girl woman there. And she was like, yeah, you were really, I mean, you were here last night. I was like, I was here. And, uh, and then I was at a separate like bar or table and then we put them all together and then we were at the bar and then I met these guys who they were gay, which is cool. High fives, New York city, man. Cool people are cool people. Y'all, you know, um, and we started hanging out and, and there was other girls we were hanging out. And then we left that bar and went down like the side fire escape. It was like a fire escape, but it wasn't, it was just stairs. Cause some of the stairs were, um, like electric stairs or the, the, you know what I'm trying to say? The, uh, they move on their own. What are they called? Help me out y'all. But then there were actual stairs that you would walk on. So I somehow got, I lost those guys. And then found the the one. Her name's Adrian, uh, and that's when she was like, "Oh, Lusty Pat, yeah, you were really on it." And then I was back on the subway, which, by the way, all this means something. Look up dream interpretations of 
a train, right? I know the subway train is, there's there's a, a stop and go, but uh, a, a more, not rapid stop and go, but that kind of like a, a messaging for your life that there's a stop and go, a stop and go, a stop and go, which is not bad. That's life, isn't it? Every train does that. You know, even if you're on the Accela uh, in China or, or anywhere else, it, it makes stops. Or you have Mission Impossible on it and it gets all effed up. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, which if you have not seen the new Mission Impossible, see it. It's really good. I love those movies. They're doing something completely new and different. Uh, uh, you know, where Ethan Hunt, it's like he accidentally somehow makes it work. You know, where everything goes wrong, but then it all works out. So it's really, really great. I'm a huge fan of, of Haley Atwell and Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, so I tell you, there's a lot more to it. Uh, and good, bad, ugly, whatever. There's a lot more to it when I'm meditated and tapped in. L. Ron Hubbard speaks to me all the time, or at least the energy of L. Ron uh, speaks to me to help me understand a lot of the things. And, and vice versa, I'm helping him understand a lot of the things. So it's just, that's why dreams are so important. And I can't I express enough how vivid my dreams are at night. Um, I remember for a long time, for a couple, for like a week there, I, every night I had a dream uh, years ago, maybe in 2019, 2020, where these vampire zombies were chasing me down, like a video game thing. And they wouldn't get me. I was out running them. And then one finally got me. And it, eventually it, uh, it changed. But also I had the dream of, um, of, a, of a huge... Uh, a, a spaceship saucer flying and landing in front of me. And I was like, just in shock and awe and surprise. And I was like, what? And then the, uh, my star brothers and sisters, I'll say the beings, the brothers and sisters that came out of that ship and another, uh, dream, they were flying and floating and they had wings on, not on, but they had wings. They weren't big wings. They were little wings. They looked Asian as well. And uh, that was another amazing dream. What do all of them mean? I don't know, but I love them. They're great dreams. I don't know where I'm going at night, but I dig it, man. And there are messages for me and for you. Um, I have had dreams where I completely told my future uh, and, and nothing like, thank you, nothing, nothing like uh, uh, super big or, or wild or anything, but like a moment, which, hell, it's psychic abilities, man. It's cool. Um. Yeah, I do a lot of ums, don't I? No, I do that. I do impressions of Arnold Schwarzenegger in, in the 70s. And, uh, you know, Arnold in the 70s, uh, you know, would uh, he would do that a lot because he just learned English. So that's probably why I've trained myself to do that. Because obviously I'm a talker and I can just uh, talk and talk, chit, chat, chat, chit all day long. They're words. They don't rule us. Dan Cook joke. I think he's hilarious. I love Dan Cook. I think he's a great, great comedian. A uh, smart comedian, too. He used MySpace to become famous. Remember that back in the day? He would literally just friend people and send them little clips, like one clip, and be like, hey, I'm, I'm here tonight. I'm here. And he would sit there all day long. He would do uh, um, lead marketing. It's sales tactics. I don't know if he did sales somewhere and learned that. I did that with fitness training. I would do 200 emails um, in like a day, right? Just... Copy, paste, copy, paste, and then change the name. Copy, paste, copy, paste. 200 of them in one day to uh, past clients, everyone at the gym. I would get maybe 30, 40 replies, right? Out of those 30, 40, I would schedule, let's say 15, right? Out of those 15, eight would show up. If not eight, then four or five, right? And then I would sell those four or five, and they would always buy. That's great sales. Any salesman out there, you know right now, like, fuck, that's great sales. You're like, I know, I know. 200 emails. But again, those four or five sales, um, and I did that every month. Thank you. Look at that. Look at the ringing, baby. That's a sign. That's a, my voice is cracking. Thank you. Um, call from a little bitty, 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 bitty. The, um, all right, let's let that ring, y'all. But that was, was lead, mar uh, lead marketing, but also sales, you know, 200 emails to make, you know, 
five sales, but also I would do those same emails the next month. So those people would always get the email from me. And those 15 that scheduled, I never stopped. Eventually, I would get the, the rest of them uh, to come work out. And not all of them bought, but a good portion of them did. So if you make, if you're a salesperson, you know, making one sale a month, one sale a week, something like that is brilliant. You're the best salesman ever. So I would do at least three to four a week, 2020 on the clock. Um, and that's why I made well over $100,000 as a trainer, uh, which is uncanny. But again, I got to a point where I was training like 130 plus people by myself and I'm, I'm good. I'm great. But you know what? I've gotten to a point going, I, I needed help. And my ego was, and I will say ego in that point. Cause I was like, I can do it. No, I can do it. Oh, I burnt myself out big time. And, uh, but you learn these things, man. Tony Robbins did the same thing when he first started his company and I'm starting these videos and I, I want to do like, there's a part of me that's like, I'm going to do like five a day and all the, do all the signs. And I was like, wait a second here. How many of y'all really know about astrology, uh, your astrological chart, psychic abilities, mediumship? I mean, I have all these things. Uh, like, if, wait till I start channeling. And there's a guy that popped in my head. If you've ever watched some channelers, they get a little weird, right? And we'll say it, but yeah, you're... Your body starts moving in certain ways and your head and, you, you, you know, we know we're like kind of talking in third person because we now are given a message from our, our beings and things. I do that as well from Galactic Brothers and Sisters, uh, Angelic Brothers and Sisters. Um, but I also do it from Bruce Lee, Muhammad Ali. And what's so awesome when I start doing that, y'all, um, and usually it's like, like from midnight to like one or two in the morning. And then also I'll have... Um, some galactic beings uh, uh, or, or, or collect, I don't even know what we are. Uh, they've done some great work with me, thinking it would, not thinking it would scare me. It wasn't to scare me. It was what? I was never scared. They were reptilian looking. What? Yeah. But I was just like, okay, well, let's talk. Let's, let's, you know, and I wasn't scared of them, especially the way they presented themselves to me. It was more of a, a cartoon style, but like in the space around me. Right? Well, bad. They're tricking you. Well, then they're doing a great job. Good for them. <laughs> I always say I'd rather talk to someone uh, and, and understand it. Like something that popped in my head the uh, the other day. Charles Manson. I'm not giving him credit for what he did. I don't think it was the thing to do. It's not what I would want to do. Uh, I don't promote it whatsoever. But why was it uh, Roman Polanski's house? And did you hear the Polanski as I said that? The other voice popped in. Um and Roman Polanski is a notorious child molester in Hollywood. Like everyone knows. That's why he moved to France because he had uh, and lives in France and still does it. The laws are a bit different there, I guess, uh, or is accepted or so. I don't know. But in the United States, he's he's uh, I think there's still a warrant out on him for child molesting for for, you know, why did Charles Manson choose that house? I don't have the answer, but I think it's pretty fucking interesting, you know? So, I, I do believe that Charles Manson went through some kind of awakening, but it, it can F you up, too. What, Pat? Yeah, missing 411, same thing. You know, uh, not everyone's meant to do what we do. You're right. He had his... And again, what really helps me out a lot, y'all, is getting to the God, and I'll never get... Well, yes, Seeing it from the bigger picture. Does it make it okay? Does it make me feel better about it? Yes and no. Like, why did they choose to do that in their life, in their film of life, in their script of life? Why was that the thing they chose to do? All right. Why did I choose this way? You know, why did uh, Missing 411, if you guys don't know, Google it, choose that? I mean, we wrote our scripts with God, with these beings, with everyone, with the uh, Pleiadians. Thank you, my friends. Blueprinters as well. You know, the Freemasoners call it the the architect, the grand architect of life, uh, which is a blueprint. You know, blueprint architects. Um, they, I think Freemasoners say supreme being as well, don't they? Something like that. And I know that Scientologists also call it a supreme being. So I say God. Source, creator, Bob Rossi in the sky, baby. That's one of my favorites. You ever seen Bob Rossi? Come on. 
Look at him do his little painting. He's just like, hey, we're going to put a little tree. Put a little tree right here. Happy little tree. We're going to paint this. And boom, this beautiful picture. You know? Um, I can only imagine the amount of rehearsing and, and, and painting that picture over and over and over again to get it so well in his mind that then he could improv on it. You know, which that's, think about it. Is that really improv when you've trained so much? That's when I say improv is, is an improv. When you watch people, uh, that TV show, they're actors. They've trained. There's a set of rules and guidelines they have to, they work within that makes the scene work. A yes and. They always agree. They make their partner look good. They make, it was 20, 25 on the clock. So that's why I even say with Marines, they say, adapt, improvise, overcome. I'm like, you're not improvising. You train to do that. So it's not improvising. You are actually responding to the situation. So therefore, improv is, Im, people who improv, right? Even when I get up on a stage in front of people, it's not improving. I'll have a I'll have a thing to talk about, or even when I turn on this video and look at me just go and start speaking and do my thing. You know, I'm funny, I'm silly, I'm, you know, this would be more improv because I have a topic. And also, no, it wouldn't. Why? Twenty plus years of my life, I've trained as an actor, performer. Uh, I've sat here and done the work with my higher self and my beings and my friends and my guides to kind of have this teleprompter go off in my head to speak these things and these messages to you. So is that improvising? Words, man. Human words. Which is why when I talk about like what humans call the greys, uh, uh, star brothers and sisters, again, I don't use the word alien or extraterrestrial. Ugh, it's gross. Uh... You know, that's not what they call themselves. We don't really accept it, but we don't know what else to say. Yeah. And I'm not speaking to the grays right now, but... Uh, and I don't really speak to them, but I, I do, but we interpret them, their words the best we can into, into English, right? They don't speak English. They know English. We, we know telepathy better than anything. And that's not their names, the grays, but like, we all just keep saying that. And then we say abduction. They abducted it. Really? You know that no one can do anything to you in your life that you haven't already scripted out for yourself. We're not allowed. And it's not exactly that, but kind of that, right? No, it's that exactly. That's cool. So, and I know it's scary, man. I know it can't fire in the sky style. Think of it. Why did that guy, uh, if you ever seen it, he's the one 27, 27 o'clock who was, uh, he, him and his, his, uh, logging crew in Arizona saw a, a spaceship. And again, I don't say UFO cause it's not unidentified. It's a motherfucking flying saucer. Clearly it's a spaceship. It's the millennium Falcon people. Come on. Um, and not exactly the millennium Falcon. I know, but the, uh, and it's not accident either. It's not like the, 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 you know, our star brothers and sisters. It's not accident at all. James Gunn did a great channeling. And I actually was channeled this like a year before he did his um, Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. That what They can go invisible. These these ships can go interdimensional, uh, invisible, can go itty bitty tiny all around you right now, can be super big, can they can do quantum, like quantum physics is not even a theory or anything to them. They can do it. Right, it makes sense. They can go into what we'd call the spirit world immediately. They're already in both different dimensions and realms, and and you know everything all at once, just like the movie. The, you know, we thank you. We do that. Humans can too. We just some of us don't remember it yet. And when we astral project, we're getting better. We're doing our thing. Some of the government can already do that, and 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 all over the world, which is awesome. Good for them. No, Pat, they should tell people. Man, let them do what the they want. You do you. You know what I'm saying? Like CIA, thank you, motherfuckers. I know you do some weird stuff, but you do some great stuff too. Um, <laughs> who do you think helps me with all this? I'm not saying it's the CIA spy, uh, uh, psychic spies. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't even call you guys spies. You call yourself. No, we call ourselves spies. Yeah. Um, and we don't help you. Uh, they're like we keep you from seeing some of the things that I'll be honest, I don't want to see. Or maybe I'm not ready to see it yet. And I'm A-OK -okay with that. All right? If it's anything like the energy I have to feel sometimes just from people around me, holy shite. <laughs> They're laughing. They're like, thank you. Like, it can it Fs you up a little bit, you know? But it's no accident when people see, uh, spa I was about to say UFO spaceships, um, or reptilian beings. I mean, be thankful. Or Sasquatches. Um, 
it's no, there are no coincidences at all. And uh, I will say this, if you go out looking for Sasquatches and first of all, first of all, is that a word? Talk to, talk this, our, our galactic brothers and sisters, galactic federation, our star brothers and sisters are all here right now. You can see them and talk to them. Just, just ask, ask and you shall receive. Think about that, right? Now, if you want to put an expectation on how to see it, cool. They're going to help out. I never did. I didn't even care about this stuff, which is one of the biggest reasons why I awoke spontaneously, uh, which wasn't spontaneous, but it was it was a lot uh, because I didn't. I don't give up, and I still don't. I mean, I do, but I'm like, whatever. Um, I'd much rather sit with me and my guides and hang out and do things, and and I'm really you know, drawn to do these videos. Thank you. Uh, guided to do these videos and talk to people because man, I am one hell of a speaker, a performer. And, uh, that, that I love doing. Hey, give me a script. Maybe we'll start doing some of that too. You know, I mean, if you watch my other videos, I do my commercial work, which is really a lot of fun. But, uh, again, it's no coincidence, especially the fire in the sky guy. Why was he so drawn, um, to, and I don't know his name, but you can Google and look him up for me y'all and, and make a comment. Why was he so drawn to leave the truck to walk under the 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 ship? You know, heck, I want that. I would do it. Scared? Sure. Why? Who, who, I'm never really scared. I end up going through um, what people call ego death, right? Because I'm expanding. So that would be something. But then I also know how to meditate and whew, breathe through it. And I think you guys would, I mean, we are helping me, but especially on the ship. It, and I've been on one many times at night. Uh, again, my dreams aren't dreams, man. I'm, 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 I'm surfing the cosmos. Oh yeah. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to title it this surfing the cosmos. Uh, I'm going to write that down. I'll remember. We'll remember that. Remind me of that y'all. Uh, yeah. So it's really fun doing these, it, it, getting back into it. Um, it, it, you know, there's this thing in me too, that I, I, I want, I want to have a hundred thousand uh, subscribers and viewers all right now, which is, yeah, awesome. And I know it's going to happen. Um, that expectation is great, but now it's also, there's a part of me that I don't want to say releasing it or just don't get so hung up on it before. When I did these videos, I swear it was just for money. And of course I'm doing this to, to make a career and a living out of it as well. Um, but I think it was just, it was just the money part of it, right? Or something, or it wasn't time because I got, I had one video that went like, I don't know, 10 K viewers or, or six K viewers or would have you know, gone more. And I sat there like, I should be excited by this. I should be. And I felt weird. I was like, this is it. I don't get it right now. And I ended up deleting everything. Um, cause I, that's weird. Right. And I couldn't even imagine someone like Allison Mack and I'll say it with Nexium, things like that, becoming a star on a TV show and having that feeling. But yet, hey, 10 years, and it was nothing to do with that next step, even though a lot, everyone in Smallville was a part of that in some way, shape, or form. Do not let them, why do you think immediately they're like, let me just, oh, let me disassociate with all of, uh, not me, not me, bullshit. Come on, you work with someone like that for 10 years? There's a lot more to it. I'm not getting into details. Uh, I would rather them speak their truth uh, instead of me having to like call people out on things. I don't, I, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. And the other thing with psychic abilities, y'all, me knowing everyone's secrets, right? Hearing it in my head as I meet you and things. You think that's fun? No. Uh, and I end up immediately, automatically even saying um, things to them that they they end up like freezing or like standing like, uh, uh, and they're, it's, it's your own shame into it. And I'm like, I'm not trying. It's just, it's what I'm hearing. And I just, I'm trying to have, just have a fun conversation with people. Not a coincidence there either. Just like seeing the uh, starships and things like that. And they're not, remember the starships are not accidentally showing themselves to us. You know that, right? They're not like calling down to, uh, uh, you know, Scotty. Scotty, I'm getting a lot of looks here from the people on the planet. Did you hit the cloaking button? Ah, uh, Captain. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what, I, it's, that's, that's odd, Captain. I don't know, uh, Push the button, guys. Whoops. No. You know, just like I think James Gunn wrote it the same way. Um, it's not that at all. 
You know, they want, they want people to, they want us to see them when jets, you know, uh, when they're flying in front of a jet on camera, they know they're on camera. Think of it. That ship can outfly that jet any day, shape, time, presence, freeze time. I mean, it can go beyond light, beyond, you know, teleport. It can do so many different things, but it's showing itself saying hi in a lot of ways, just like why they do the light show with it. Light is also um, a message. I think it's a mathematical message. What we call mathematics and numbers and geometry is actually universal language. Um, everyone speaks math in every plane of existence, dimension. I love it. Thank you. You hear the existence. Um, they, everyone speaks math. And uh, John Nash, you know what? We're going to do another video today just on John Nash alone. John Nash was not crazy, y'all. He was ascending. He did mathematics. Einstein did the same thing. But Einstein was able to really meditate and understood what was happening and going on with his ascension. Right? Um, we'll, do, we'll do a video on John Nash and we'll do another one on Howard Hughes because, again, Howard Hughes was ascending. How did he invent everything he invented? Right? And he had to go through the, the ascension process, which can get weird, y'all which is one of the things I want to speak about. Uh, I was taken to be evaluated many times. And each time they just let me go within like 10 minutes or an hour. They're like, this guy's fine. And also, if you do not sign any um, uh, consent forms when you go into the hospital, especially if you're forced, that is against your civil rights. Okay? And that means you have a lawsuit against... I mean, I have a lawsuit against the hospital police, many, many people, because I did not sign anything. All right. That means my rights were given away to other people who tried to confine me or put me in a box. Was, th was I weird with what I did? Of course. But fucking hey, people are weird, man. I'm an actor. Actors are weird. You know, this whole process of, and it's not a process, this whole spiritual awakening is fucking weird, man. You know, um... But how dare anyone, no one has the right, especially in the United States, in life whatsoever, the right to, to sign anything, um, especially when you're being calm and, and complying and, you know, like, what, 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 wait, what's going on? And you're asking, you're not even asking questions. You're just very calm and complying. They had no right for me personally to take me in. That is against the civil, your civil rights. And if you go into a hospital and you do not sign consent forms, they have kidnapped you. Now, emergency room, a little different. Of course, if you need the help, you're going to want that. But I didn't ask for that fucking help, did I? They took my blood, right? Where, yes, verbally they asked me, but that's not how hospitals work, is it? That's a lawsuit right there. Maybe that's how I'm going to make my millions and billions. All right, let's leave it there, y'all, because I'm going to get all fired up in a good way. But I love you guys. Thank you for listening.